Jackson Radio Show. All right, everybody, welcome back. Kevin Jackson here. We're talking about patience. Were you patient? Were you waiting? Huh? How many minutes? How many? What? How much time passed? <laughs> I don't know. Two minutes and two seconds. Isn't that what uh, Chuck Wooler used to say? We'll be back in two and two. When he did the love connection. Well, we have a love connection. I don't know how many commercials run. I don't care about that stuff. I don't care who makes money on the show. I'm happy my affiliates do. I'm, I mean, I'd say I don't care. I'm, I care that the people that support the show get paid. But, um, you know, I'm just happy to be doing this. Anyway, we're talking about a guy who wrote a piece for the New York Times. And he said 2017 was maybe the best year in human history. But he doesn't want to give Trump, Donald Trump credit. In fact, he's sort of, and I'd really backhanded, He, you can tell he's a leftist. But he's ta- he's giving you stats and things that are improving around the world and will continue to get better because Donald Trump sees the world through a different vision of everybody else. When Donald Trump goes to build a resort in some country, he's not thinking this is only for the elite. He's hoping everybody participates in it. This is a guy who's been to practically every continent and done some form of work there and looks at the world through a different set of eyes and sees this big pie. I'll tell you something. If you ever go to China, if you ever get the opportunity and you you can see a city spring up and it's got 500,000 people and that's a little city. I, I lived in St. Louis, 318,000, and they think of themselves as Chicago. China has a 500,000 person population city. It's under development. It's like a village. <laughs> they don't even think of that as a big city. They're looking 20 years into the future at hydro dams and and all kinds of, you know, green energy projects and things that are going to keep that city sprawling. They're looking at infrastructure and, you know, pouring concrete and putting up buildings and and uh, trying to figure out where they're going to put all these folks. That's what they're doing. You get a city there that's got uh, a couple million people. That's finally getting to the size of being oh, you know, a town. They're, these cities are growing like crazy. Think about it. One point five billion people the Chinese or something like that. It's close to that. And now they've gotten rid of one child, uh, their one child policy. It's got, they, they're anticipating an explosion. So you look at what's going on in these places and you see that the pie is getting larger. And here's Donald Trump. He's saying, okay, open up your markets to us so we can reach more of your people in China. Just recently said, you know what? We're going to unban 183 products. Now that wasn't just for America. Every country in the world can now ship those products to China. That's what's so cool about all of this. And so this pie is expanding. Anyway, this guy, he goes on, he says, readers often assume that because I cover war, poverty, and human rights abuses, I must be gloomy and ayor with a pen. But I'm actually upbeat because I've witnessed transformational change. As recently as the 1960s, a majority of humans have always been illiterate and lived in extreme poverty. Now, fewer than 15 percent are illiterate. Fewer than 10 percent live in extreme poverty. In another 15 years, illiteracy and extreme poverty will be mostly gone. After thousands of years of a generation, they're pretty much disappearing on our watch. Well, I'll ask you this. Do you think that they would have disappeared faster under Obama? Or do you think they disappear faster under Trump? Because Obama just says, let's go throw some money at Bangladesh or throw some money at Pakistan or whatever. And Donald Trump says, no, if you want our money, you're going to adapt to our way of life. Who's more civilized, us or Pakistan, us or Bangladesh, us or deep, dark Africa? Name me where it's more civilized. This is one of my big complaints. Every time they talk about multiculturalism, it isn't a, a, a movement of whites into Africa or into the Middle East or into the uh, Central America. It's movement of those people into white countries as if the white countries have done something so bad to them. White people are not the majority of the people in the world. I, find, I know people find that hard to believe, but they're not. Brown and Asian people, yellow, brown and yellow are the the majority of people in the world. You don't see people going, let's bring a bunch of Asians into Africa. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Idi Amin kicked Asians out of Africa. He kicked out Indians, East Indians, you know, from from India. (laughs) 
So don't talk to me about, you know, multiculturalization, all this nonsense. All the all these these gains that are being done, they're not coming out of these countries. They're coming out of the countries like uh, the UK, Canada, America, Scandinavia. Now, I'm not trying to be all white centric. I'm just telling you the facts. So, you know, get over yourselves. Anyway, he says, just since 1990, the lives of more than 100 million children have been saved by vaccinations, diarrhea treatment, breastfeeding feeding promotion, and simple steps. Stephen Pinker, Harvard psychology professor, explores the gains in his terrific book. I'm not going to say what it is because I'm not promoting any of these guys. But here's what he goes on to say. President Trump wrote this gloom into the White House. The idea, make America great again, professes a nostalgia for a lost Eden. But really, if that was, say, the 1950s, the U.S. also had segregation, polio, bans on interracial marriage, gay sex, and birth control. So see, I'm going to stop it there. This is where I want to take a guy like him and put, put my fingers around his neck and say, you're an idiot. Because he is an idiot. This is a guy that wants you to think that he wants to go back. L- let me tell you what, we, what I'll be happy to go back to. I'd love to go back to the 1950s black family. Do I want to go back into segregation and all that? Heck no. And we never will. He knows this. Everything he's described has nothing to do with Donald Trump. Donald Trump has no problem with segregation. I'm saying he, he he's not a segregationist. Donald Trump's not looking to take people back to where polio was a big deal. He certainly doesn't ban interracial marriage. He has no problem with gay sex. He has no problem with birth control other than why should you want me to pay for it? None of this has anything to do with him, but he puts it in. He rode this in and now he wants to take us back to there. That's the type of logic these people use. And then he goes on to say, what moment in history would you prefer to live in? Really? Let me finish what he said earlier. He says, most of the people in the 1950s lived under dictatorship. Two thirds of parents had a child die before the age of five. It was a time of nuclear standoffs, peace soup smog, of frequent wars, of stifling limits on women and of the worst famine in history. That's what he says. And he alludes that Donald Trump wants to go back to that. Yeah, the guy that's that's bringing prosperity into middle America like we haven't seen in decades He says, uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald said the test of a first rate intelligence is the ability to hold two contradictory thoughts at the same time. I suggest these. The world is registering important progress, but it also faces mortal threats. The first belief should empower us to act on the second. We did. We acted on the second. We got rid of the guy who proceeded over the worst economic conditions in American history. If it weren't for the fact of you folks and people like me working our butts off to save Barack Obama's butt, we would have been in a big depression. And he's made the most unsafe world in the history of man. And this guy wants to actually complain and act as if Donald Trump's the problem. This is what we face on the left, folks, and why you listen to me and why we fight them so hard. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.